My name's Mark Nixon, and I'm from Arans Medical. I'm here to talk about wound imaging and measurement for clinical practice and clinical research and uh, reviewing some of the options that are available. What we'll cover in this presentation is why wound measurement is so important, some of the traditional methods that are available and some of the advantages and drawbacks of these methods and some of the underlying assumptions that are made when using them. We'll also look at some new generation 3D based wound imaging systems and we'll give you an example of uh, one of the available 3D systems that is available today. So why is wound measurement so important for clinical trials? Well the wound size is an important inclusion exclusion criteria and wound area is often used for this. Also uh, healing rates can be used either as a, um, a secondary or tertiary endpoint and sometimes it's also calculated to uh, remove rapid healers from a clinical trial. Now wound measurement is an important part of, of source documentation and um, there's no reason why any issues and difficulties with uh, wound measurement should uh, lead to uh, difficulties with, with a clinical trial. In terms of clinical practice, uh, wound measurement is very important in assessing healing trends and also as a prognostic indicator. For example, is this wound getting better? Is this wound static? Or is this the sort of wound that's made slow progress and would benefit from more advanced uh, wound healing technologies? And then the wound uh, measurements can be used to track the, 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 uh, and monitor the benefits or otherwise of using these new, new, uh, uh, new treatments. It also can help you with uh, decision making and it also can have an input into um, developing uh, treatment protocols. Wound measurement is, can be also uh, an important tool for helping with patient compliance as it can be very motivating for the patients to see the, the healing of their wounds over time. And it can also give some important feedback into the lifestyle choices that patients are making in terms of their wound healing. There can be reimbursement aspects of wound measurement and also it's, it's an important means of, uh, protect, of protection against uh, litigation risks. So what are some of the traditional methods for healing wounds that I'm talking about? Well here we're really talking about rollers, acetate tracing, and also uh, digital telemetry using digital cameras. So we'll look at these uh, in turn. Rollers are probably the most common way of making a wound measurement. And this is because uh, disposable rollers are cheap uh, and very easy to use. So most commonly a ruler is used to measure the length and width of a, of a wound. Now of course the length times width gives you an area of a rectangle and so that is, it will be uh, larger than the length uh, than the area of a wound as you can see in the diagram. The length time width is giving the area of a box which is in this case surrounding the, the red wound in the, in the picture. Now I just want to have a talk in a, and I'll give you an analogy um, of what an index is all about because it would be very useful if the area index could be used um, as an indicator of wound healing. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is an index that, whose value is taken to re represent an entire stock market. Now the Jones of course is not the stock market but it's an indicator and it can be used as an indicator because there is a relationship between the stock market and the index. And because of that, the, uh, the, Dow, the Dow Jones Index, because it's easily calculated, it's a very useful tool for tracking changes over time. So the question is, can length times width be considered an indicator for a wound's area? In other words, is length times width a valid area index? Now, for this to be true, there would need to be a relationship a proportionality between the length times width measurement and the true area of the wound. But unfortunately this is just not the case. Now let's see why. Well there is a couple of main issues associated with this. Firstly, the intra and inter rater variability is very high when using rollers. And there's a number of reasons for this. 
uh, one of the reasons is that there are a number of different ways that users are taught to measure uh, a wound using a ruler. For example, there is the largest length times by the largest perpendicular width method. Another common method is the so-called clock method, and that is where, for length, a superior inferior, or 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock measurement is taken, and for width, a medial lateral, or 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock measurement is, is made. Now, even if the users all use the same method for making the length and width measurements, there still can be a high degree of variability. For example, this wound here, uh, some users might make a length and uh, measurement that goes from through the wound from a superior to an inferior aspect such as this. Other users might make a, uh, a, a they take the a length to be from the the superior to the most inferior extent of the wound. And other users, even though they are trained not to do it and know they can't do it, can't avoid the temptation of slightly tilting the, uh, their axis so that the length gives a, uh, perhaps in their minds, a more representation, representative uh, length of the wound. So between all these three measurements, there, the, there is a 15% discrepancy between the smallest and the largest. Now the other problem with using the uh, length times width as an area index is that the errors accumulate. For example, I have a square here whose sides are 10 centimetres. So it's easy to work out the area. The area is 10 by 10 or 100 squared centimetres. Now let's say we introduce 10% of error into the length and the width measurement. 10% of 10 is 1, so that equals 11. So, a, so that would be a, a, a square of size 11 centimetres by 11 centimetres. And that has an area of 121 squared centimetres. Now that is an error, an area of 20%. So as you can see there, that small blue outline represents 20% of the area of the, the larger square. Now at this stage, some people even uh, uh, take a, a depth measurement. Now depth is an important indicator of wound healing. But the uh, measurements taken using uh, a depth probe, such as a Q-tip, are very imprecise. So if you, say, calculate a volume index, being length times width times depth, um, this calculation is even less reliable than, in, uh, than an area index. So unfortunately, our hope has been dashed, and length times width is not proportional to wound area, because we cannot find uh, a, a relationship or it's not proportional to the wound's true area. So what options are available to us? Well, planimetry is the measurement of area of a surface, and acetate tracing is a uh, is the traditional gold standard for making area measurements. It has a number of advantages over a ruler. Uh, for a start, it does uh, take into account some of the curvature of the surface of the of the of the subject, and it is directly measuring the area as opposed to um, deriving it from length and width. There are some drawbacks. It can be messy, uh, uncomfortable for the patient, and it is a risk of uh, infection. Also, it is not so uh, repeatable at making uh, measurements of areas of the of the body, like the heel. So with the advent of the digital camera, it was hoped that we might be able to get the best of both worlds through, through the application of digital planimetry. So a number of software packages have been developed that you load into it a, a, an image, and the image has a target, like a ruler, so that we can scale the image. Um, the user outlines the, the wound, and with the knowledge of the scale, we can calculate a surface area. Now the problem is that there are a number of important assumptions that need to be um, be considered when making a uh, a digital planimetry based area measurement. First of all, there's an, there's an underlying assumption that the wound lies in a flat plane. Also, there is a scale target, and that also needs to lie in a plane. Now the wound and the target need to lie in the same plane, and finally, the camera lens 
needs to be parallel to the to the uh, the plane that the wound and the target is in. So if any of these four conditions are relaxed, a significant uh, amount of error can be introduced to the surface area measurement. So for example, with my digital camera, uh, I took a, a photograph of a of a square uh, of a square wound, and I loaded that into my digital planimetry software. Um, after indicating where the, the ruler was, it gave me a measurement of 99.5 squared centimetres. Not bad. So now I um, took an, a second image, and this time I lowered the ruler one inch below the plane of, the, of, my, wound, of my wound model. When I loaded that image into the digital planimetry software, the, the answer that I got after outlining the wound and selecting the target was 148 squared centimetres. So as you can see, by merely lowering the ruler one inch below the plane of the, of the wound, I introduced almost 50% error into the wound area measurement. These problems have also been described by others. In this example here, the researcher has slightly tilted the plane of the camera so that the lens is no longer parallel to the plane of the wound. They found that doing this decreased the surface area from 20 squared centimetres to 13 squared centimetres. This is an error of 35%, a decrease in area of 35%. So as you can see here, when uh, if you're not taking extreme care when making these digital planimetry uh, images that the the area that you are calculating can be a bit of a lottery. However there is one important aspect that digital planimetry brings that other techniques do not and that is the fact that at the same time a digital image is being acquired. And a, a digital photograph of a wound is an important part of uh, wound documentation. One of the problems though is that the modern digital camera is absolutely feature laden and it is so easy to um, not get a good digital image. For example, um, the image may be out of focus, uh, it may be poorly illuminated, or the, the, the wound may even be obscured by a target. There is also the very practical problem of um, storage of the images that you've collected, and which are is a security and privacy issues. And there's also um, the practical issues of um, detaching the photographs to an an EMR. So there is a new uh, breed of wound measurement systems that are based on three dimensions, um, such as uh, structured light, uh, such as laser triangulation, or techniques based on stereo vision, such as photogrammetry. So there are a number of advantages of 3D wound measurement systems. First of all, they capture a 3D description of the wound and the surrounding anatomy. Also, there is no target required, so there's no need to worry about the placement, the careful placement of a uh, target such as a ruler. Now, because we have this 3D model of the wound, quantities such as area and perimeter, volume and depth, can be derived directly from the 3D model. Now, data is all in electronic format. So this allows for easy integration into an EMR system um, and uh, it can be used else elsewhere for data analysis. Now there are also some issues of traditional uh, wound measurement that also remain with these 3D wound measurement systems. For example, um, they are unable to determine the, uh, the degree of undermining. And also, circumferential wounds can be more challenging, although even large, quite extensive wounds can still be, still be imaged and measured. Now, some user interpretation is required of the measurements that are obtained with 3D systems. For example, if you have a, a large circumferential wound that is reasonably superficial, um, and you obtain a volume measurement, still care needs to be taken in terms of how that volume measurement of a superficial wound like that is interpreted. Now I'm going to give you an example of a, a 3D wound measurement system that is available. It comprises a, uh, a camera, which is, uh, is specialised lighting and illumination, 
which attaches to software that runs on a tablet or a PC. The first thing is that the user has a username and password and logs into the system and then they select the patient so that the images that are captured are immediately tagged to the appropriate patient or subject. Now the user takes the camera, uh, the, there are lasers that help guide the user so that they are the correct height above the, the wound. And this guarantees that the, that the images are always in focus. They gently squeeze the button and the images are collected. Now back at the computer, uh, the user is able to zoom in and then start to trace around the outline of the wound using the, the mouse or potentially a touch screen if it's a tablet. Now as soon as that outline is closed, uh, the wound measurements, such as volume and area, depth and perimeter, are automatically calculated and uh, displayed uh, beside the, the wound. The system has also the capability for the user to add any documentation that may be pertinent to the, the clinical practice or the, or the clinical research. And all these fields, which might be drop-down boxes or radio buttons or text fields, are all customizable. Finally, the user is able to generate a PDF report which summarizes the, the measurements, uh, the images, graphs of changes over time, and any documentation notes that may have been uh, collected. So Silhouette now has been used uh, both in clinical trials and in clinical practice. In clinical trials it has been used in a number of studies, both small animal studies, to large uh, multi-center studies across uh, different continents with hundreds of users and uh, hundreds of patients. All the image that is captured is stored electronically, including the, the medical digital images and the, the measurements that are taken directly off uh, a 3D model of the wound. Studies on wound models have shown that the accuracy is, uh, of around, is around 2% for area, 1% for perimeter and 5% for depth and volume. This is taken on, on models of wounds. Now because our measurements are so accurate, the, uh, the measurements can be tracked reliably over time. And all the data is saved on a centralised database, so anyone with the appropriate access can access the data over the internet. All the information is stored and, uh, securely, and both the stored and transmission is encrypted. All the views and any changes to the data is all audited and there is regulatory clearance uh, in many jurisdictions around the world, including uh, the FDA. So now, really for the first time, we are able to collect uh, wound measurement data that, that, that we have never been able to collect before. And because it is in an uh, electronic form, we are able to do things with it that, um, that have the potential to transform wound care practice and we can make better informed decision making and have a better all round experience for the users, the patients and subjects, for the insurers and for the other stakeholders involved. So in summary, when looking at the options that are available to us, we have a ruler which has the advantages of being cheap and very easy to use. There's acetate tracing which allows us to obtain accurate surface area measurements of the wound. There's digital planimetry, which allows us to obtain uh, high quality images if, it's, uh, if appropriate care is taken. And now there are 3D based systems, which are easy to use, um, they make accurate measurements, they obtain at the same time high quality images of, of the wound, and they can be integrated into um, other electronic databases and EMR systems um, for storage of, of the data and integration with the with the health record.